Bermuda, media, thank you for coming today. This week, the PLP has been mailing out flyers to homes around the island, saying that the One Bermuda Alliance will end uh, the economic empowerment zones for the Hamilton Northeast area, Somerset, and St. George's. Now, normally, I wouldn't respond to something like this, flyers that are being put out. And normally during campaign time, I recognize that the waters can very much get muddied. And so there sometimes might be a misinterpretation of what's being said. But I want to bring to your attention a flyer that has been going out by our government that has been talking and saying a bold-faced lie about what the One Bermuda Alliance represents and what it has said about the EEZ zones. Now I'm going to walk you through this so that you understand why I feel so passionate about speaking to this. The paragraph says, the One Bermuda Alliance, the OBA has pledged to get rid of grants for businesses operating in the EEZ zones. Under my leadership in the One Bermuda Alliance, no one, not any of my shadow ministers, has ever pledged this here. This is a lie. And so I say to you, Bermuda, are we standing strong or are we standing on lies? Bermuda cannot stand on the legs of lies. And so what we have said about the EEZ zones is this, that during these economic times where all businesses throughout the island are finding it difficult, listen, entrepreneurship has no geographical boundaries here. Entrepreneurship starts from St. George's right on through the dockyard. And so what we have said is that the incentives that we have given to the EEZ zones, we now, during these economic times, should extend it to all small businesses who are looking to get started. That's what we have said. And for us, and for Bermuda, to receive this kind of mail, we will not stand for this. And I know that Bermuda does not stand for bold face it lies. This is a lie. Now normally during campaigns, as I said, misdirection sometimes, but to tell a lie? And I don't believe that this country is willing to accept this anymore. It continues on. It gets even more disturbing. It says the OBA doesn't really care about businesses in these areas. They are looking out for the wealthy families that have historically controlled the island. You know what? When you've run out of ideas, when you've run out of solutions, this is what happens. I'm going to say it again. When you run out of ideas and when you run out of solutions, it is this kind of foolishness that happens. And so what's next? Telling lies about the One Bermuda Alliance and what it said? What's next? Personal attacks? I can assure you, Bermuda, that after having read this, that's where we're going. The subtle references to racial disparity and these kinds of things. Going back down the road, listen, I'm going to say this here. If you can't pay your rent, it don't matter if you're black or white. It don't matter if you're Filipino. It doesn't matter whether you're an expat. If you can't pay your rent, you cannot pay your rent. So we need to move this country in a direction that brings us together. I've heard that from our government. Is that happening? This flyer is saying, no, that is not happening. We are moving back towards the kind of politics that divides the country rather than brings it together. And the One Bermuda Alliance is all about bringing people together bringing this country together because the only way out of the mess that we are in after 15 years is that we come together bringing solutions and ideas to the table. Our government is out of them and so they are resorting to these kinds of things. So you can expect more of this to continue but I can assure you that this really and truly needs to be thrown in the trash. That's where it belongs. Because 
The truth is a truth, and a lie is a lie. And that is a bold-faced lie, Bermuda, and we will not stand for it. And so with that in mind, I'll open it up to any suggestions or questions that you want to have. Uh, I know that this is a strong message right now, but Bermuda needs to move forward, and we cannot accept this kind of behavior from our government. Any questions at all? What is your view or your take on the mom and pop, mom and pop store, the, the small businesses? How are you going to assist if? Well, we've already said it. We believe that the EEZ zone and the incentives that were established was a great idea. Listen, I'm a benefactor of that. I'm a small business owner. The Bermuda Small Business helped me out when I was getting started. It is a good thing. And so we need to continue working with our people, continue working with our businesses, but on the backdrop of families not being able to feed themselves, on the backdrop of people sleeping in tents right now, on the backdrop of taxi drivers not being able to fill up their tanks, people losing jobs on a regular basis, and businesses dying on a regular, daily, weekly basis, we can't be standing on these kinds of lies. We need to open up the communication between one another and talk and say, listen, what do you need, small business? And how can I help with making that happen? That dialogue is not happening. We're giving out lies to the community to misrepresent what the One Bermuda Line stands for. This is a good thing, the incentives that have been given, and we need to continue those. That's where it lies. Anyone else? I suppose one could say that uh the subject of the EEC was, if that's all they've got to get you on, even if it's not false in your eyes, if that's what they're putting into a flyer which they have to print and send around the island, they must be running out of ideas to criticize you on. Absolutely. You know, again, I've said it already. Run out of ideas, run out of solutions. So the next best thing is to character assassinate, to go after the OBA, tell lies, and Bermuda is not going to stand for it just not going to stand for it, and neither will the One Bermuda Alliance. It's just not going to happen. Can you touch upon the word austerity, which you've used as a, a good word and the PLT abuse as a bad word? Listen, austerity is not a bad idea. When you've got excess and waste, then you need to cut that waste out. If you listen, and I, I find it interesting that there have been some uh, brochures that have been put out saying that, uh, you know, all we're going to do is practice austerity moves uh, 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 towards the economy. Well, let me just say this here. In the early 2010, Cabinet circulated a memo to civil service. This is what it was entitled, Government Austere Saving Initiative, requiring civil servants to implement austere cost-saving measurements. So the government now wants to practice austere measures, but at the same time wants to criticize us for saying that if we've got excess waste that we need to get rid of it. You know, last year in the budget, I had the opportunity to listen uh, to our national security minister who said that, um, um, you know, we're <laughs> we have to practice austerity measures justifying the cutting back of the police budget. So, you know, this is kind of like a cliche phrase, the pot calling the kettle black. This nonsense has got to stop. But you're just not going to accept it. Just not going to accept it. But um, in the same breath, um, your party has gone on record many times saying the civil service has gotten bigger than it's ever been. On this Certainly. Government. If elected tomorrow to be the ruling government, are you saying that you won't cut the civil service? We've said it many times before. Media, uh, you've heard us say it many, many times before. Our finance, shadow finance minister has said we will practice when it comes to the civil service. If it's looking at cutting cutbacks only, we will do that if there's retirements coming into place, but we're not coming in here to, to cut and uh, 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 you know, take a whole clump of the civil service, throw it out somewhere. That's not what we're talking about doing here. That's not what we're talking about doing at all. Uh, we're going to use and cut back through attrition. That's what we have said. The government would say they're doing that now in certain areas. You're saying it's not enough. Sorry? I said the government would say they're cutting back through attrition and retirement now in mm -hmm. certain departments. You're saying those cutbacks are not enough. Well, we've got to continue. We, we have to continue on. I'm not saying that what they're doing isn't a bad thing when it comes to those measures. What I am saying is that <laughs> we have decided that the way forward is not to wholesale come in to the civil service and cut them out. That's what we've said. Okay, 
Okay, one final question. There are those mm -hmm. in Bermuda who feel the next general election will see mudslinging of epic proportions. Mm -hmm. You've just said you expect more of this bill face sort of thing. So you're going to fight fire with fire? What are you going to do? No, I think what we will do is stand our ground. We will not accept lies. I recognize, as I've already said, that sometimes the waters can get muddy. But this kind of nonsense has got to stop. Bermuda will not accept it. As politicians, we have to take the responsibility for where we are. That's what we have to do. And if we've muddied the waters, then we need to get those waters clear again. And the One Bermuda Alliance will not do that by misrepresenting what we do and will do is give facts. We will not use fair tactics to get your vote. What we will do is tell you the truth and give you the facts. That's what we will do. Mm.